speak to you today. He has never called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. We have come for an encounter with you today, Lord. Visit us by your word today. Let your word establish a change of story. You have called this for us, our covenant day of favor. Let your favor speak on our behalf. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, mighty God. And blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you today for the blessing and the privilege of being in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have in store for us in this brand new month. None of us will miss our portion in this season in Jesus' name. You have called this our covenant day of favor. By your word and the encounter we have with it today, let your favor rest upon every life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word transform each one of us today. We give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise, and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. It has been prophetically declared that this month, the prophetic focus is breakthrough is my heritage in Christ. Can we say that together? Say it louder with assurance. And that breakthrough heritage will be manifested in your life this month. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Our teaching series, which we are commencing this morning for our Sunday services, is entitled Unveiling the Breakthrough Power of Love. Unveiling the Breakthrough Power of Love. God, servant, our Father made this very profound statement in the first service this morning. That the Word of God is the most authentic book on success. There is no principle, no guideline, no theory that compares with the authenticity and authority of God's word when it comes to success. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then, Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In other words, it is impossible to adhere to the instructions of scriptures and not end up in success. The word of God is the only guaranteed path to success. Following any other path is living life by trial and error. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3, he said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. It shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. It doesn't matter what his trade is, what his vocation is, what his career is, what his business line is, if he's following the word of God, then he's sure to attain success. Today, I see each one of us aligning with this law of success and enjoying the best of it in this season. You believe it? Say louder, amen. amen. That is why you discover that the scripture makes clear to us that everywhere you see frustration, you see stagnation, you see limitation, it is the product of ignorance or the absence of application of scriptures. In Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, it said that my people are in captivity because they have no knowledge. They lack knowledge. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it said my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. So the frustration, the stagnation, the limitation is not because there is no way out but rather because there is no application or discovery of the laws of success in scriptures. I pray that for each one of us, this month will be our month of discovery. 
and this month will be our month of conscious application. And as a result of that, this month will be your month of unprecedented success. The things that you have never been able to see accomplished, God will deliver it for you this month. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. But from scripture, we discover that God is specific on the force required for any man or woman to experience supernatural success or breakthrough. And that force, according to scripture, is the force of love. The love of God burning in the heart of a man or a woman is the guaranteed access to a life of success. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, it said, I had not seen, I had not heard, it had not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So a lover of God cannot end up a backbencher, they must be pay setters. He said, the things that eyes had not seen, that ear had not heard, that has not entered into the heart of man, they are the things that he has prepared for them that love him. So when your love for God is confirmed, you cannot end up a backbencher. You will always be a frontliner. I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of Jesus. I said, I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of Jesus. In fact, the scripture makes clear to us that out of the forces that rule destiny, love is the failure-proof force. It said, now abided hope, faith, and love, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13. And verse 8 of that scripture says, charity or love faileth not. No matter what else fails, the one that is operating by the love of God at work in his or her heart is guaranteed success. For somebody here today, I see your success taking place speedily in this season. You believe it, say it louder, amen. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, very profound scripture. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. When you find a lover of God, they are not only working things, things are working on their behalf. That's what it means. And that's what success is all about. Success is not just about imputing labor in making things work, but it is also seeing that the things that are on your behalf are working together for your good. I've said before that it is possible for you to work things and things not work. It is God that has the ability to make things work together for your good. And it takes the love of God burning in our heart to see things working together for our good. In this month, things will work together for your good. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said in this month, Things will work together for your good. Yeah. Now, very quickly, what is love? Let us give some description and definition to the subject. What is love? Love, in our context, number one, is giving one's heart to God. Love is giving one's heart to God. Love is giving one's heart to God. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, the Bible makes us to understand there, it said, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. My son, give me your heart. Love is giving one's heart to God. We must come to understand that according to scriptures, what God desires first is your heart. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 10, it says that I, the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God is always in search of the heart. 
when he finds a heart that is completely given over to him, you will see God manifest in such a life. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and in verse 9, it said, The eyes of the Lord go to and fro the earth, looking for a man whose heart is perfect towards him, to show himself strong on his behalf. God is always looking to show up. God is always looking to manifest, but is looking for the heart that is given unto him. And that is why when you talk about love in this context, it is about making sure that your heart is given unto God. It is possible for you to engage your mouth, engage your hand, and not engage your heart. The scripture makes it very clear. It said, these people draw near to me with their lips. And with their tongue, they give honor unto me. But their heart is far from me. When we talk about loving God, we are talking about giving him your heart. I pray that each one of us here will receive grace this morning to offer our hearts unto God for life. Amen. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. Number two is loving whatever God loves. Loving whatever God loves. In the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, very popular verse of scripture, God so loved the world. The world there refers to the lost. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. God so loved the lost. So if truly you claim to love God, one of the evidences is your heart for the lost. Your pursuit of the lost. Jesus said to Peter in John chapter 21 verse 15 to 17. He said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, feed my lambs. He said again unto him the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said to him, now feed my sheep. And the third time he spoke to him again, Simon, lovest thou me? And Peter, he said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love thee. Jesus said, the only evidence is feed my sheep. Now, the sheep there are not just those who are in Christ already, but those who are to be brought to Christ. John 10, 16 says, Other sheep do I have, which them must I bring, that there may be one shepherd and one fold. So your love for the lost is the evidence of your love for God. You can't claim to love God if you don't love what he loves. Every genuine lover of God demonstrates their love for him in the pursuit of the lost. I pray that today a new passion and zeal for the pursuit of the lost to see to their salvation and their establishment in the faith and in the church will come afresh upon each one in the name of Jesus. I said, I pray that a fresh zeal from on high, a burning passion in your heart will be ignited by this encounter today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number three, what is love? It is a God-first lifestyle. A God-first lifestyle. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 to 40, look at what the scripture says here. It says, that a man came and said, Master, which is the great commandment of the Lord? Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. The second is like unto it. He said, Love thy neighbor as thyself. This is the first, he said, and the great commandment. If you are going to actually claim to love God, you must understand that it is a God first life. A God first life. God first in all things. Shout hallelujah. So where you place God is a depiction of your love for him. In the course of the week during the covenant hour prayer, God's servant and father said this very striking statement. He said God is too big to occupy second place in anyone's life. The greatness of God cannot accommodate anything less than first. 
There is nothing fit for God except it is first. God requires, God demands that we place him first. It is the only evidence of genuineness in our love for God. I see each one of us receiving grace to live this as a lifestyle in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You believe it? Say louder, amen. amen. Number four, what is love? Love is a kingdom priority lifestyle. Kingdom priority lifestyle. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, we are all familiar with this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first. It is making the kingdom of God your priority. And you see testimonies every day based on those who made the kingdom their priority as a lifestyle. You see God decorating their lives. You see God propelling them to heights that they cannot attain on their own. Simply by committing to that lifestyle. I see grace coming afresh upon each one of us in the name of Jesus. That means that from today, the kingdom of God will always be a priority in every area of your life. You believe it? Say it louder. Amen. There is no area of life that God cannot visit when the kingdom of God is your priority. He steps in in every area. Do you not hear the testimony of one who lost a brother? And then when they were told, they began to pray kingdom advancement prayers. The, the desire was for the brother to be resurrected, but the prayer was for the kingdom to be advanced. And as they were advancing the kingdom, the resurrection power went to answer in the mortuary. And he that was dead came back to life. Why? Because you cannot advance the kingdom and not be decorated by God. In this season, particularly in this three-month prophetic season, I see God decorating you supernaturally. Yeah. As you advance the kingdom, just be rest assured that God will decorate every area of your life. We had a testimony in the second service. A woman stood on this altar to give glory to God. According to her, she joined the church and began to engage in kingdom advancement and divorce. Also began to sweep the zone where they were herself and her son. And God began to bless her. Before you knew it, she said, God gave her a house. Blessings on every side. God healed her of sicknesses. She said by the time she was celebrating her 60th birthday, October 1 that just passed here, her children gave her a Lexus Jeep. God turned her story around on every side. Hallelujah. Why? Because of the advancement of the kingdom. For you in this prophetic season, God will turn your story around supernaturally. If you are the one, say louder, amen. Number five. Number five. What is love? It is placing God above all else, including self. Placing God above all else, including self. Placing God above all else, including self. Luke chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. The Bible tells us there, Luke 14, 26 and verse 27. It says, if any man come to me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, children, brethren, sisters, and yea, his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That word there, hate, is a relative word. If he does not exalt me, and my kingdom above every other thing else, he cannot be my disciple. So you discover that when we talk about genuine love for God, it is elevating God above all else, including yourself. Where you yourself are sec you are you are behind God, you, you have put God as a priority above yourself. Shout hallelujah. That's why when you see a true lover of God, they don't serve God at comfort. They serve God even in discomfort. Where, it is they, where, where they are demoted as it were to promote God. Where they take a step back to push God forward. Because you cannot push God forward and end up backward. As you are moving him forward, you are also going forward. Is somebody getting what God is saying? You lift him up, you cannot stay down. The moment God becomes your focus, every area of life, enjoy supernatural lifting. Today I see each one of us receiving grace to put God above all else, including self in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. Now, what is in love that engenders breakthrough? Why do we say from scriptures that love provokes supernatural breakthrough? What is in love that engenders breakthrough? We are going to look at four things here quickly this morning. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will grant each one of us light today in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one, love enhances access to revelation. Love enhances access to revelation. In John 15 and verse 15, Jesus speaking there said, He said, I call you no longer servants, but I call you friends. He said, because a servant does not know the things of his master. He said, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. When you enter into a love relationship with God, you gain access, unhindered and unimpeded, unimpeded access into the secrets of God. And the secrets of God is what makes stars on the earth. Now look at this very clearly from scripture. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. It said, we all with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the spirit of the Lord. Now look at this. It means that you cannot see revelation and remain in your situation. Revelation brings about supernatural transformation. That is why it's important for us to understand that the more your love for God is proven, the key for your turnaround is released. You begin to see light. It says, as you are seeing it, you are changed from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. So you can never stay at the same level with divine secrets. You can remain at the same level with divine secrets. As your eyes open to his secrets, you find your life changing supernaturally. I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of Jesus. Amen. You believe it, say a loud amen. amen. I say, you believe it, say a loud amen. amen. Isaiah 60, beginning from verse 1. It said, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. The light there is the entrance of the secret of his word. Thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. He said, Behold, darkness will cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen on thee. Gentiles shall come to thy light. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. He said, look at verse 4 and verse 5 very closely. Verse 4 and verse 5. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They gather themselves together. They come unto thee. Thy son shall come from far. Thy daughter shall be not at thy side. Look at verse 5. He said, thou shalt see and flow together. Thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. What is causing all of these things to happen? Arise, shine, for thy light is come. When your light comes, your breakthrough follows. Shout hallelujah. Verse 8, what does it say there? It says, who are these that fly as the cloud and as the doves to their windows? Verse 15, what does it say there? It said there, verse 15, it said, Where, where hast thou been forgotten and you have been hated, that no man went through thee? I will make thee an eternal excellency, the joy of many generations. Verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation and I the Lord will hasten it in his time. When the secret of God lands in the life of a person, that person is catapulted into breakthrough. Is somebody getting what God is saying? That small shop that you have can become a global phenomenon by divine secret. But the secret of God is revealed to those that are proven as lovers of God. They are proven as lovers of God. One key from God is enough to take dominion over any territory. But those secret keys are revealed to those whose hearts are proven as lovers of God. We have heard on this altar many times the testimony of the man David Green. Still alive and well today. 
A man who has committed himself to God, committed himself to the advancement of God's cause, and trades and deals in arts and craft. He runs a, a company called Hobby Lobby. All they do is sell arts and craft. Economy has been going up and down over the years, but they have been going up and up. Not once did they ever bring salaries down. In the midst of depression, depress, recession, they were increasing salaries. Things were going up. Others were going under. They were going over. Why? The secret of God is the maker of stars. It doesn't matter what is art and craft that people will be buying in a time where there, is no, where there are no resources. But when you have divine secrets, even if you are in an ocean, you can still sell water. Because the secret of God is a maker of stars. I want you to understand something by divine secrets. In this season, I see God catapulting you to untold heights. If you believe you are the one, say a louder amen. I love what he said in verse 22 of that scripture. He said, a little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a strong nation. And I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Welcome to your season of speed. As you prove your love for God in this season, God will accelerate your testimony of breakthrough. Yeah. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. Yeah. Number two, love empowers our faith to deliver maximally. Love empowers our faith to deliver maximally. If you want to see your faith deliver, let your love for God be proven. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. It said, faith which walketh by love. In other words, the faith that will walk must be operational in a heart of love. Until your love for God is confirmed, your faith in God cannot walk. Please hear this and hear it very well. It takes the confirmation of your heart for God for your faith to work. And that's why the Bible makes it very clear to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 2. Look at this very closely. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 2. And although I have the gift of prophecy and understand mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and I have not charity or love, I am nothing. So absence of love nullifies every other thing. When your heart and your love for God is not in place, it nullifies the workability of your faith. That is why it is possible for you to gather all the scriptures that should energize faith. But if your heart and love for God is not confirmed, you'll find out that the faith inside you is like a blank bullet it does not deliver anything shout hallelujah it does not deliver any results there is no impact on release because it is it is the potency required is absent it takes you and i understanding the necessity of our love for god to see our faith work supernaturally so if you want to see your faith deliver maximally, then you must operate in love. Your love for God must be confirmed. And when faith is in place, it brings you to the realm of all round possibilities. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. It says, all things are possible to him that believeth. So when your faith is able to walk, you enter the realm of possibilities. Where things that nobody can imagine are delivered supernaturally. Shout hallelujah very shortly the things no one can imagine coming out of your life will be delivered without sweat. Yeah. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. I said somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. So your faith is made to deliver maximally on the basis of your love for God. When your love for God is confirmed, you will see your faith begin to deliver supernaturally. I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, love facilitates answers to our prayers. Love facilitates answers to our prayers. 
It facilitates answers to our prayers. First Samuel 13, 14, we come across David there. The Bible says he's a man after my own heart, speaking of David. And in Psalm chapter 66, verse 18 and verse 19, Psalm 66, verse 18 and verse 19, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He said, but the Lord has heard me and he has attended to the voice of my prayer. David was saying, my heart is not right with God. God will not hear me. But now God has heard me and attended to my prayer. Why? I am a man pursuing his heart. When you pursue the heart of God, you have accelerated answer to prayer. Accelerated answer to prayer. You look at David's example in scripture, you see every time David called, you see speedy response. First Samuel chapter 13, beginning from verse 1 to 8, David returned back to Ziglag, the city where he was dwelling, and the city was burned down to the ground. All of his men, their families, their wives were taken away. Only he and his men remained. Nothing, nothing was left. All their property disappeared. And the Bible says, why they wept and wept. The men wept until they, on, until they thought of stoning David. But David went before the Lord and began to ask God, simple question, Lord, should I pursue them? Will I overtake them? God did not waste time. Instantly, he said, pursue. That will surely overtake. And without fail, you will recover all. And we know the scriptures. Verse 19 to 21, David recovered all. There was nothing missing to them, whether small or great, whether wives or children. David recovered all. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, we come across another account. David was, the, the Philistines gathered in the valley of Raphim against the children of Israel. And David was right there at the wall front. Lord, what should we do? Do we go against them? And God said, go against them. And they went against the Philistines and discomfited them. Again, the Philistines returned the same valley, same condition, same situation. But David did not make assumption. He went to God again. And instantly, God answered him, don't go directly. Go behind the mulberry trees. When you hear it going on the mulberry trees, bestir thyself. I feel that is the Lord going before thee. And David again defeated his adversaries. Instant answers because of his heart for God. Because of his heart for God. You can't struggle for answers in prayer when your love for God is confirmed. You can't struggle for answers to prayer when your love for God is confirmed. When your heart is panting after God, you don't struggle for answers to prayer. God, someone, our father said, he obeyed God in one instruction and the Lord spoke to him. And, and I mean, he, he desired in his heart and said, you know, for this kingdom assignment, it will be good for this person to have a, a 504 vehicle. It will be good for this task. And he just said that inside of his heart, no prayer point, nothing raised before God yet. And the very next day, somebody brought a 504 vehicle. And he said, ah, this must be for that person. And gave the car to the individual. And he said to himself, Lord, will you not wait for me to even ask before you give me answer? And the Lord responded to him and said, there is a company of those that before they ask, I answer. While they are here speaking, I say, here I am. Before they ask, I answer. While they are yet speaking, I am, I am acting on their behalf. Shout hallelujah. That is accelerated answer to prayer. That while it is still a consideration, it is already turned to a manifestation. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is somebody get what God is saying? But what is it that registers a man in that company of people? It is an individual whose heart is burning after God. I pray today that you will be registered among that company of people. You believe it? say a louder amen. I said, I pray that you'll be registered among that company of people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, love enhances access to wisdom from above. Love enhances our access to wisdom from above. We have the account of Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, Solomon loved the Lord. You check Solomon's background, you discover that there was nothing as it were that qualified him for the greatness that he experienced except for this one factor solomon loved the lord i checked through the account of the sons of david 
And I discovered that the sons of David, there were some of the sons of David that had very peculiar features. The Bible described them. They were unusual men. Some of them physically unusual. Some of them unusual in their acumen. Some of them socially unusual. Very, very strange dimension of, you know, various attributes. You could look at each one of them. But when you come to Solomon, you could not really find anything that was distinctive about Solomon except one thing. Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. That was his distinctive feature. And the Bible says he went and sacrificed upon the altar a thousand burnt offerings and the Lord came down. And he came to Solomon, what is it that is making this man do this thing? He wanted to prove his heart. What will you have me do? And Solomon said, Lord, all that I want is you have given me an assignment that I'm not able to carry out. I don't know how to go out or to come in. But give me an understanding and a wise heart so that I'll be able to carry out the assignment that you have given to me. And the Bible said the same, please the Lord. And the Lord said, you mean you have not asked me for the life of your enemies? You didn't ask me for riches? You didn't ask me for honor? He said, that wisdom that you desire to do my work, he said, I will give you wisdom that no one will match. And the riches that nobody has ever tested, even though you didn't ask for me, I will give it to you. And the Bible tells us from 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, all the way down to verse 34, we have the description of Solomon's wisdom. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. It says, and Solomon ex excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East country. That is an entire side of, you know, nation, you know, a group of countries. All of them put together. One man was wiser than all of them. He said, and all the wisdom of Egypt. And he was wiser than all men. Than Ethan, the Israelite. Than I I Israelite. Than Heman, than Chaco, than Dada, than the sons of Mahal. And his fame was in all the nations round about. Everywhere they were talking about it. What kind of wisdom is this? And how did that wisdom come? By loving God. By a heart for God. And you see, the beauty of it is, is this. When wisdom comes from above, it is not in mighty words. It shows in mighty works. You will see unusual occurrences. Mighty works. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> we see that in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 54. The Bible tells us there, Where has this man, this wisdom, and this mighty works... Everything that is doing, just blowing up to different dimensions by the wisdom from above. That will be somebody's experience here. Yeah. I said that will be somebody's experience here. Yeah. You believe me, say louder, amen. Yeah. I said you believe me, say louder, amen. Yeah. Look at what God is doing in this commission. For example, mighty works. You can't see the sweat, but you can't doubt the sweat. You call, you arrive in church and then you just hear that between last Sunday, the last Sunday that we were in church, you know, 460 something churches were planted. You are hearing it even though you are inside. It is like breaking news to you even though you are inside where the news is breaking. Because there is nothing breaking on your system. Everything is at, is at ease. No sweat but continuous sweat. Because the wisdom of God is at work and the hand of God is at work. From today, that will be your own experience. You believe it, say a louder amen. I say, you believe it, say a louder amen. I heard God summon our father say, he said, this thing has left our hands. It's not us again walking. This is God's hand at work. And that's what of course, when you begin to love God, he takes over. People, you are fronting for him, but every other thing is what he's working it on your behalf. Shout hallelujah. From today, that will be somebody's experience here. You are the one say loud amen. I say you are the one say loud amen. Lift your hand to heaven and give thanks to God for his word that you have received this morning. I appreciate him, glorify him. Father, thank you for your word that has come my way. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. May each one of us today receive grace to prove our love for God like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, the things that your hands have never touched before will become cheap testimonies in your hands. In Jesus' precious name. Now, today is our covenant day of favor. 
And by the time you are emerging from this service, the favor of God is drenching every area of your life. Amen. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. It's important for us to understand that when we talk about the subject of favor, it is one of the spiritual provisions made available for us to distinguish and to decorate our lives. When favor rests upon an individual's life, that person's life is positively different. It is always supernaturally demarcated. A favored man cannot blend in, they must stand out. Today I pray that the favor of God that will cause you to stand out will rest upon your life afresh. But favor must be entreated. The Bible makes it clear to us in Psalm chapter 45 and verse 12. It said, the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. So there are scriptural keys for you and I to engage, to open us up to the realms of favor. Very quickly, therefore, what are the keys to operating the realms of divine favor? We we'll look at a few of them quickly this this afternoon and I see each one of us stepping into unusual dimensions of favor from now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number one key is new birth. New birth. Salvation is the foundation of our encounter with favor. Until a man is born again, he cannot be a partaker of heaven's favor. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. Look at this very closely. It says, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. That faith there is the faith that brings about salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9, the Bible says, we are saved by grace through faith. So everyone that is born again is a partaker of grace. And what is grace? Grace refers to favor. Every child of God therefore can be said to be a child of favor. It means that until a man is born again, he cannot be a partaker of heaven's favor. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 5 and verse 12, it said, Thou will bless the righteous. He said, for with thy favor you will compass him about as with a shield. And when a man becomes born again, that individual registers among the righteous. That is the starting point of our work in righteousness. And it is that that gives you and I access to divine favor. My prayer today is that for anyone that is yet to have a genuine encounter with salvation, may today be your hour of salvation. Because that is, the, that is the vital key. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3, it says to us there, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? You cannot escape mishap and misfortune until you enter the way of salvation. Shout hallelujah. But everyone that is a child of God is a child of favor. I see favor decorating you from today in the name of Jesus. Number two key is serving God and the interest of his, his interest of his kingdom. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Because that engenders for us supernatural favor. If you want to enjoy the favor that comes from God, one of the vital ways to do it is to commit yourself to serving God. Psalm chapter 102 verse 13 to 15. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Why? For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and they favor the dust thereof. As a result of it, what will happen? The heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Thou will arise and have mercy, because the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. What made it happen? He said, because thy servants favor the dust and the stones of Zion. 
What are the stones of Zion? They are the souls of men. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5, it says you are lively stones built up into a spiritual house. So we must understand that our love for God, our service to God, our pursuit of the lost is a vital channel to access heaven's favor. Shout hallelujah. You can't favor God's cause and lack God's favor in your life. You can't favor God's cause and lack God's favor on your life. I pray that for each one of us today, the grace to sustain our commitment to serving God, may that grace come afresh upon us in the name of Jesus. Job 36, 11, it said, if they obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So very clearly we are told our commitment to serving God is the key to favor. Now look at this example of Jesus. Luke chapter 2 verse 49. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. By verse 52, and the child grew in wisdom. He grew in, by verse 52, 52, Luke 2, 52. The child grew in stature, grew in wisdom, and grew in favor with God and man. As he committed to the father's business, the favor of God began to decorate him. I see God's favor decorating you supernaturally in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no one ever runs out of favor running after God and the interest of his kingdom. You can't run after, out of favor. Running after God and the interest of his kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all these things others are dying for, they will be running after you. That will be somebody's experience here. The things others are struggling for will start running after you. You believe it, say it louder, amen. I say you believe it, say it louder, amen. Number three key is sacrificial investment of our financial resources in promoting the kingdom of God sacrificial investment of our financial resources in promoting the kingdom of God is one of the keys that procures favor for us. We saw the example of the man Solomon. Solomon offered to God as a proof of his love a thousand burnt offerings. And as a result of that, he entered into unmistakable favor. God stepped in on his behalf and turned the story into a living testimony. That will be somebody's experience here. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 3 down to verse 13. Down to verse 14. We come across the situation of the children of Israel. Everything was upside down because they neglected the house of God. And everyone ran to their sealed houses. He said therefore the heaven over the state from giving rain. And the earth has become like brass. No productivity, no result. He said but consider your ways. Go to the mountain. Bring down wood. Build my house that I may take pleasure in it. And as a result of that, he will now step in to bring about a turnaround. Shout hallelujah. Please hear this. Every opportunity to advance the kingdom of God by your sacrificial investment, take advantage of it. Because in doing so, you are positioning yourself for heaven's favor. We have heard the testimony of God's servant our father. He said that when the first church planting adventure of this commission was taking place, and the Lord had instructed the planting of five churches, and then he went before the Lord, warned the Lord, the resources for this, it doesn't seem to be coming the way it is. And the Lord pointed to his car, give me that car. And he took the, he went, he said, he ran quickly to meet our mom and said, look at what God has said, though. he wants the car. And she said, praise the Lord. And he took the car and gave it unto the Lord. The giving of that car has not even com been completed. It was taken to where it was to be sold and turned to cash for the project in which it was running and he said going home that same day God spoke to him my son David even if you don't want to be rich it is too late say with me favor a sworn blessing on the basis of sacrificial investment that's why you take advantage of every opportunity because as you do so you watch God turn everything that looked like captivity into a testimony that will be your experience in the name of Jesus Christ Every captivity will be turned around to a testimony. You believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. Lift your hand to heaven and give glory to God for his word that you have received today. Thank you for your word, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Before we go further this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are, if you have not yet surrendered to Jesus, you have not yet made Jesus the Lord and the Savior of your life. This is your opportunity. 
The starting point to the journey of favor is giving your life to Christ. Wherever you are, you are not yet born again. Or maybe there are those who are here who need to re rededicate their lives to Jesus because something has gone wrong along the way and you need to start afresh. Wherever you are in any of those two conditions, quickly rise your feet now. I want to pray with you. You want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to him? Quickly on your feet right now. Wherever you are, God bless you. God bless you. Don't let anything hold you down. This is your opportunity to have a genuine walk with God. A genuine walk with God. Quickly on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please remain standing where you are. And we are going to be praying from right there at this moment. Suspend filling your form for a moment. And lift up your right hand before God. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Lift up your right hand before the Lord. And pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Louder, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you, no turning back. I will serve you, no turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, thank you today for these precious ones that have come today in response to your call. We thank you because no one ever comes to you that you ever turn back. Thank you for accepting them. Grant each one of them grace to walk with you all the days of their lives. No turning back for any one of them. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a brand new day for you. Make sure you complete the form that has been given to you. And return it to the official that is closest to you. Be reminded of our foundation school, foundation class that was earlier announced. It takes place every Monday. You attend just two Mondays, tomorrow Monday and the upper Monday. And you have a wonderful walk with the Lord and a glorious adventure ahead of you. The office will contact you to let you know the place closest to you. Take advantage and you shall be blessed. Shall we all rise on our feet this afternoon and give Jesus a big, big hand of praise as we get set to receive his blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.